Hey, it's Pete, and welcome back to Question Christ. And just this week, I made a video about the Holy Spirit, the Twilight Zone, <laughs> New Year's Eve. Please check out that video because you're gonna need to know what was said in that video. I got a response video from Honest Discussioner. What's up, Honest Discussioner? Uh, I've watched a number of your videos, and I wanna thank you for bringing up some points that I did not make clear in my last video. Obviously, as all, all of us are here on YouTube, we're always trying to whittle things down uh, to make it more palatable for people who don't want to watch 15 minute videos. So uh, in the process, I did not explain myself clearly enough. So I do appreciate that. And I want to kind of clear up some of the things that you brought up. Uh, even though we don't agree and we might have to agree to disagree on some things, we don't have to be disagreeable. So I do appreciate uh, your tone and uh, I thank you for your video. So in my first video, I was talking about New Year's Eve and how New Year's Eve sometimes is a reminder of how we have not changed from last New Year's Eve. And I was saying the real way to have change is through the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I was telling uh, in my last video that I, I think that the world tells us to ignore uh, problems within us, that, that we can just ignore it or change the name of it and, it sh and it'll make things better. And one of the points I brought up was the Junior Oxford Dictionary. Uh, they took out the word sin out of their, their uh, dictionary. And an honest discussioner says, well, hey, this is for seven-year-olds. <laughs> no one's taking it out of the, the adult dictionary. Um, so he didn't see what the problem was. But I, I think that's the point exactly, that seven-year-olds, young children, are, are growing up um, trying to be more in a more secular environment where we're not going to discuss what sin is. Um, and so... You know, if kids don't learn about sin early on, there's not going to be a need for it in the in the dictionary in the future for adults. Uh, and so, I, even if kids don't use that word, I think it's a good question for a kid to ask: Hey, what is sin? Because when we recognize that there are things that we can do, ways that we behave, th things that we feel and act on uh, that are wrong in the sight of God, that brings up a whole other discussion. Uh, and I think that's healthy. Um, so I, it, that's, I, I think that's a point there, th that they're taking it out for the next generation so we don't even have to think about it. That, that's exactly my point. Now with the DSM, uh, I talked about how narcissism was being taken out of the manual that talks about personality disorders. And there's some, you know, some uh, you know, discussion on exactly them streamlining it or not or something like that. But uh, I understand that uh, I actually worked in the mental health field for a little while. Um, but this was what I was talking about more about how they change names and they kind of water things down. And you, by explaining yourself in your video that some uh, uh, psychologists or psychiatrists do not agree with this, is again a perfect example of how some people don't think it should get watered down or streamlined or changed. I'm not saying they're going to ignore it. And when I, uh, I that was the part where I was talking about changing the name, making it a little less offensive, watering it down some. So that's where I was getting at with that. So the crux of Honest Discussioner's uh, response was that uh, the fact that I was saying that real change only happens with the Holy Spirit. And he brought up that there can be plenty of people who have no faith system whatsoever who are, who are really bettering themselves and changing themselves for the better. And the fact that I think only you can do that through the Holy Spirit, uh, I'm kind of not seeing things clearly. <clears throat> I want to make it clear. I'm not saying that people can't better themselves in some ways uh, without God. Um, you know, there are people that I know who don't uh, believe in Christ and are, are very nice people. What I'm trying to get at was that there are things that, you know, that are, when we don't recognize that things are sin, that there's sin, and there are things that are sinful in God's eyes, um, we are blind to that. Uh, we can live up to the good standard of the world, but that doesn't mean that we are good in God's eyes. This is what the Pharisees were doing back in Jesus' days. They were doing all the religious uh, jumping through hoops that you had to do, you know, they were, you know, giving money to the poor and they were praying in the right way and they were observing all these laws, but their hearts were filthy <laughs> and they were selfish and greedy and judgmental and the whole, whole bit. So there, it was the matter of the heart that Jesus was calling them on. It was not, uh, are you doing all the right things? 
Uh, so these are the things that I'm talking about, this, this, this conviction that the Holy Spirit gives you. I had this myself where, you know, again, I was living a good life before I accepted Christ. You know, I was not breaking the law. I was paying my bills. I was in a respectable job. I loved my family. I loved my neighbors. Uh, you know, I tried to help people in need. Uh, but there were things inside me that were broken, okay? And those things I did not even see until I was convicted of the, by the Holy Spirit uh, to, again, burn away some of the stuff that was holding me back uh, to know God better. And so when someone who is an atheist says, I think this is delusional, the whole thing, uh, they might, in, in, the, in the sight of the world, be living an okay life. I'm not saying people are evil uh, or, or, you know, more evil <laughs> than any, anybody else. We're all sinners. The problem is, is when you're an atheist, you don't recognize that. And that is what I'm talking about. And when you and when when you enter when you ask Jesus to come into your life and you are convicted of that by the Holy Spirit, you you know you start seeing things. You start seeing things clearly, and not in a guilt-ridden way. It's actually a very liberating way. So that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, sure, absolutely. There's a lot of people, and you're bringing up Buddha. Again, there's the thing about sin. Buddha, from what I understand about Buddhists. Uh, their deal is to is to um, to quench desire, kill desire, because desire causes pain. It's all it's nothing about God. It's about desire, about you know peace within themselves. That, that's where I'm coming up with that. And again, there are plenty of people. I, like I said, people in my own family who are are very good people, um, in the you know at, at the world standard, but none of us <laughs> are good enough. For God, because we're all sinful, and we need to recognize that. So that's where I was coming from. Now, the last part is uh, it, honest. Because the discussioner thought it was kind of interesting, he thought it was ironic that I would use uh, "Eye of the Beholder," um, and I was trying not to give it away, honest discussioner. But spoiler alert: don't don't watch the rest of this. You don't want to, you know, ruin a really good Twilight Zone episode. Um, but the person who's supposedly disfigured in this. Uh, in this episode is actually beautiful. And the people that are judging her and saying she is ugly are horribly ugly. <laughs> and I don't, I actually think this feeds right into my argument. The world, the secular world, the world at large loves to destroy and, and say that beauty is wrong. And, 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 they, and, they, and they love to, to elevate things that are, are, are horrific. I mean, look at all the video games that are that are just violent and gory. Look at all the evil, um, you know. And again, I I have no problem with horror movies, but just think, look at the sheer volume of of um, of uh, movies that talk about evil and and zombies and the occult and uh, you know how we're all attracted to to uh, celebrities that are just l destroying their lives and we love to tear down people and, and look at them on on the gossip websites and you know I mean it, it just goes on and on I mean there's there's this this love of of destroying something that's pure and so I don't see that ironic at all I actually see it as as boosting what I'm talking about uh, the world loves to take away what is good what is pure what is true uh, they love to do that, and my cat's asking me to get in the door. So hold on one second. So I guess what it comes down to, I guess what I hear you saying, honest discussioner, is that uh, you have a very humanist view, which is we can do it all by ourselves. We don't need God. That we have it, the power within ourselves. What I would say is that it doesn't take very much to see that leaving everything to ourselves uh, doesn't work either. I mean, the human character, human nature is so flawed and is so uh, innately selfish uh, that I don't want to rely just on myself because I know that that, that my, my compass is off. And that's what I think the problem is with the humanist perspective. You take Hitler, you take Stalin and their humanist ideas. I'll, I'll go with I'll go with the, the Holy Spirit every time. <laughs> so, uh, but thank you thank you for your uh, very very thoughtful uh, response video. I really appreciate it, 
and uh, looking forward to having more discussions with you in the future. Thanks a lot, and uh, thanks for the new subscribers who've come along, I guess, through Honest Discussion. I appreciate that very much, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. God bless.